So I have some family that said I could stay on their property. I show up and it's 25 acres all to myself. <laughs> so happy. Look ahead, the sea is calm and I know we've been through a lot, but just wait. For better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hey guys, I'm Sarah. This is real. We live full time in my van and I am also a healthcare traveler. If you've been following along for the last few months, you'll know that I have been taking some time off and traveling through the Northeast, but it is now time for me to take my next contract and I'm actually very excited about it. I think van life looks different for everyone and I recently got into remote work where I was moving around constantly and really only communicating with people through a screen and honestly it works for some people but the way I started traveling was through healthcare where I take three month contracts wherever I go and it really gives me a sense of belongingness and community and stability even though I live full time on the road and travel. At least I get to stay put in an area for a few months and make great connections and I'm really missing that. So I'm very, very excited to be entering the healthcare world once again. Uh, there's definitely cons about it as well, but I'm definitely looking forward to a little bit more stability in my life while still living in the van. Since I'm located in the Northeast now, and I plan on heading down to Florida this winter, I figured I would take a contract here and then I get paid to experience the fall colors, which is really cool. I'm excited to experience all of the hiking and climbing that this area has to offer. I have traveled through quite a bit of states in the Northeast, all of them except for New Hampshire and Maine. I plan on making it to those during my contract. Since I'm only working three days a week, I'll have four days off and that way I can go explore. I would say my favorite area that I've traveled to in the Northeast so far is the Adirondack Mountains. So when I saw a job pop up in that area of New York, I immediately hopped on it. And I'm not gonna lie, there were other applicants and the job closed. And ultimately I applied for this job about three times until I got it and I got it. <laughs> so it feels kind of like it was meant to be, and if not, that's the beauty of healthcare travel is it's only three months and then I get to move on. Connecticut would have been my next runner up when looking for a job in the Northeast, mainly because I have a lot of family here, which would have provided a great support system for Rue. If you watched my last video that was all about the struggles that I am currently facing with van life, my dog having severe separation anxiety is one of them. Um, in that video, I talked about everything that I had done to help her with her separation anxiety at that point, but you guys were amazing. I was so overwhelmed with the amount of support I received from you guys in the comments and I thank you so much for all of your recommendations. So we have taken more steps to combat her separation anxiety. One of them is I had my dear friend Billy at Drifter Vans make a bed platform for her in the front. So now when I'm driving, she can lay down instead of having to sit in a seat while the passenger seat is swiveled around to face the back of the van. And then he created a lock on the divider door that slides closed. So now we have separated the driving space from the van living space. And when I'm driving, she doesn't have to see everything rattling and shaking in the van which could have 
created some of her anxiety. She is also on anti-anxiety medication, which is helping not only in the van, but in social situations in general. Um, she has always been unpredictable when it comes to interacting with other dogs, but now she is so much more friendly to both dogs and humans and just her anxiety has gone down by so much and as judgmental as some people were about putting my dog on medication, I ultimately think it is a tool that both humans and pets can utilize to help combat anxiety. It really is helping a lot, but I don't plan on leaving Rue in the van while I'm working. I have already contacted multiple sitters and daycares that are interested in watching her for me while I'm at work. So basically, I'm going to arrive to the area that I will be working one week early so I can meet all of the different sitters and pick the one that is the best fit for her. I also have been looking into different personal properties to stay on in my van, and some of them have also offered to watch Rue for me, which is an amazing perk and would be the ideal situation. So I am going to scope everything out once I get there and make a decision from there. I will make sure to keep all of you updated on the Rue situation and the work situation in general because I can tell how much you all care and it's, it's really awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Another place I've traveled to in the Northeast that would have been a solid choice for work is Vermont, specifically Burlington. I spent a lot of time with my dear friend there, who I actually met at a climbing gym in California, so it's really cool that now we are on the opposite side of the country together, and that is what I love about having friends who travel. We meet up all over the country, and it just feels serendipitous. She was actually in my Yosemite video from like a year ago when I was camping there in my Airstream. She helped me get a reservation. She actually lived there and worked there for a bit. And now she is going to school in Vermont. That state is seriously beautiful and has so many great hikes and climbs. And I even spent time in a little town called Stowe. If you haven't been, you should absolutely check it out. I actually went for the 4th of July and instead of going to the big event for the fireworks, I found a little trail that was completely private that led up to the backside of where the event was for the fireworks. And I got a completely private view with no one else around right over the water. It was a magical, magical moment and it just reminded me why I am doing what I'm doing because I can literally drive anywhere, find somewhere to park and enjoy events like this without worrying about getting an Airbnb or a hotel and I have my cozy home on the road with me. Even though I didn't end up getting a job in Vermont, I will still be very close to my friend to visit her and I get to take the ferry which was so adorable compared to the ones that I used to take in Washington State. They're little baby fairies and they're adorable and I love the experience so much going over Lake Champlain. I also spent a bit of time in Rhode Island and Massachusetts, specifically Cape Cod, and as beautiful as they were, it was all coastal, and I do enjoy coastal areas, but for work, I prefer to be closer to the mountains where there is better hiking, and I feel like I would have been too secluded on Cape Cod. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. Wow. Another thing about the Cape is camping is ridiculously expensive there and they are very strict about overnight parking. So the only place I could find to stay without searching too much was a Harvest Host. So I stayed 
for only one night and I didn't get to explore very much. I know there is a hospital there, but if I were to work there, I would basically be living in the parking lot and be so far away from the mountains that I just wouldn't be happy. I did find a really nice overnight spot on the coast in Rhode Island. This is where we slept last night. It's mighty, mighty beautiful. It's perfect outside. Ruru, hey, come say hi. Come say hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> We're happy today. I found this spot on iOverlander and it was very van friendly, which surprised me. I haven't found many spots like this in the Northeast. I even met a new friend there who built out his own van and we got to meet up at the show in Topsfield this last weekend. The Adventure Van Expo was seriously so fun. I got to make so many new friends. I got to meet builders from all over the country and I got chosen to be a judge in the DIY competition. So I got personalized tours of everyone's vans that they built themselves, and there was just so much thought that went into these builds. I was thoroughly impressed. I also got to meet a ton of people that knew me through YouTube. It was so great meeting you all and actually having in-person conversations. It felt very special. Uh, this was a special event that really opened my eyes to the industry. I honestly haven't met many builders, I haven't walked through many vans, and there are just so many cool people in this industry. So I can't wait to go to the next show, I don't know when that will be but I'm definitely going to try to make it. The only downside about the show was that we used my van as the drifter display van, and that meant I had to move out of it completely. So I went to my dad's house in Connecticut and emptied out all of my cabinets and cupboards, which is my home and everything I own. So that was a big job. And then when I started to realize like how many people were touching every square inch of my van, it grossed me out a little bit. <laughs> it's one of those things that you don't realize what you're getting into until you're there and you're in it. Um, yeah, I didn't think this through completely, but I probably will not be showing my van again. This is my house and I don't really want people going through my things and having to move out every time I do a show. It's just not feasible. Someone also broke my sliding door, which I was very upset about, but I, I, I held it in. I stayed composed, uh, but somebody somehow ripped one of the hinges that slide in the track out and it got wedged in between two of the doors. Like the amount of force someone had to use to break it in that way is beyond me. I have no idea how someone could do that and then just walk away and not say anything. Yeah, that was not cool. So if you ever go to a van show, and you accidentally break something well first of all don't use so much force that you're going to break something just ask someone to do it for you second of all if you break it come forward and apologize at least i mean shoot what is wrong with people um but after a few hours of getting other builders in my van and facetiming billy we eventually got it fixed thank goodness because I would not have been a happy camper if I walked away with a broken door. I got all moved back in yesterday. I finally feel like I'm settling back into the van, which feels good. I am ready to start working. I'll be heading to New York late next week and just scoping out all of the different properties that I can stay on, meeting all of the sitters for Rue, and just getting my bearings and getting ready to stay put somewhere for three months. Woo! It is a little weird with how much I have been moving around recently to think about staying in the same place for three months, but I think it is exactly what I need in my life. I think it's what Rue needs in her life. And I'm excited to work my first contract while living in the van. I'm sure you all are very curious as to what that is going to look like. Honestly, I am too. So I will keep you updated 
If you are a healthcare traveler and you want to know how I am finding personal properties to stay on, go ahead and send me an email. I don't really want to publicly announce it because it is quite a hack that I have been using, <laughs> but I am more than happy to help out my fellow healthcare travelers that live in RVs and vans. I did live in an Airstream prior to this doing the same exact thing, but this will still be a learning experience. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow along and watch me live in my van while working in a hospital, and I will see you guys next time.